Hi. We're looking at the original intent of those who ratified our Constitution. And the purpose of much of this is to understand that the power of the people is what's trying to be controlled. And when people get together and form a government, they form great power, and people try to use that. Uh, we want to look at the word federal. Our government is a constitutional federal republic of vested, uh, declared, and restricted powers. And the Constitution we have is designed to be a tool whereby we the people rule our government. It is not a tool whereby the government rules we the people. Uh, when you look at federal if we look at the Constitution, the ratification letters, and the Declaration of Independence, within those documents, there are 12 uses of the word federal. Okay, There's one use in all of them of the word republic, only one. There are no uses of the word democracy or national ever. And there's 114 uses of the word or some form of the word representative. What was important was representation. We're looking at federal here in its etymological use. It comes from a word that means pertaining to a covenant or treaty. Um, it would come to mean a union based on a treaty and a union of states. In the French usage, it's a union by agreement. Um, basically, we came together as states, agreeing together to make a government. It was not a national government. They were very clear on this. It was in, I believe, July that they finally settled on what was the Connecticut compromise. The Madison had proposed a big state plan and New Jersey had a smaller one. This Connecticut compromise kind of put things together so you ended up with a Senate in the end of the whole thing and would be elected by the states which has changed now. It's a direct election by the people of the states. Then the population of a state would determine how many you would have in the House, in a sense giving every state an equal um, representation in the government at the Senate level while giving the big states their power because of having so many people in them. This kind of balances those things out. This gave us the federal government. And that's what we have. We would, in our ratification letters, introduce the Declaration and Restriction. And understanding the importance of that, we restrict ourselves. Um, I might, for instance, want the government to mow my lawn. Uh, somebody else might want the government to make them a dinner. And somebody else might want to use the government to fix their roof. Um, we don't want that, you know. That's not our design for government. We have restricted things that we're going to use the government for. And it's not for personal things for individuals. Okay, It's for what we all need together. Uh, we also restricted it so that those people who we had elected okay, as our representatives wouldn't be tempted to use the power that we vest in them for the benefit of some group of individuals or even for themselves, for their profit, maybe even against or not to our profit. We don't want that, so we restrict it. And the other reason we restrict it is there are people who hate you, maybe. You know, they would have everybody in your country be slaves to everybody in their country. They would take all of your prosperity and make it their prosperity. And if they can, they would use your government 
to facilitate their taking over and making you into their slaves. We didn't want that. So we wanted to declare and restrict that government. Now we can change our government at any time. And we do that by way of amendments. We'll talk about that next. Hopefully this is helping you.